recorded live. Hi, this is Michael Adams, and it's uh, Old Religion Dystopia, Knowing Versus Belief, and this is take two of a new <laughs> friend of mine uh, and brother in Christ and a warrior against the evil one and his minions, Mark Hunneman. Uh Mark, you can, you can find his work on his uh, YouTube channel, Mark Hunneman, and uh, it, don't worry about how to spell has written a book, and what's the name of the book, Mark? <laughs> and, uh, the name, has, name of the book is Seeing, excuse me, Seeing Ghosts Through God's Eyes. It's a world, subtitle, A Worldview Analysis of Earthbound Spirits. What it does is it, um, instead of just asking what the Bible says about ghosts, which is very little, directly anyway, um, I take a biblical worldview, which has uh, seven components to it, and um, I sift the notion of ghosts through a biblical worldview, and um, the uh, it that in that manner it, it allows me to ask questions of this whole issue, which would not otherwise be asked. So, if you buy my book, it's, to me it's um, it's just as valuable for teaching a Christian how to think worldviewishly with a biblical worldview as it is an analysis of um, biblical view of, of ghosts. Um, Christians really need to think with a solid biblical worldview in order to be able to think critically and um, on a worldview level so they can see and spot other non-biblical worldviews and I'm speaking particularly of the pagan worldview, which is now the dominant enemy of the biblical worldview. So, and you can find it on Amazon. So, okay, and you can also find it, and I'll we'll let folks know about the Facebook page that pertains to the book, and it's named after the book, and you can find our mark through that. And if you have any questions or whatever, so seeing goes through God's eyes. And I haven't had a right. chance to read it, but then again, I haven't had much a chance to read much of anything. And I think right now, the only thing <laughs> I'm really reading is the Word of God. That's about it. So, <laughs> and I don't know if I want. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do any more than that right now. So, to be honest with you, I don't. I almost feel like right, right now, my phase of development, I'm robbing my God by uh, reading anything else. But everything else, like He's got yeah. on my plate. So. <laughs> But anyways, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm not saying that not to, to – I, I, from from those who, who do know about it, from mutual acquaintances, they have high high regard of it. And they have, uh, from what I've seen so far from listening to YouTube and YouTube channel and also interviews with uh, Laura Maxwell, and you can find mm-hmm. that on her YouTube channel, their uh, series of interviews, Mark yeah. – knows what he's talking about. So he's definitely a brother in Christ, is grounded in the Word, and has been has experience. He's had over 100 cases dealing with the paranormal, that the world would like to call it, but what Mark and I would like to call it, demons. Right. So, um, and, um, so I imagine we're going to be talking about that. Me and Mark had a wonderful conversation, folks, <laughs> last week. And it just flowed wonderful, and we started in prayer and ended in prayer, and it was just right on, and then it didn't record. And I'm like, yep, this is <laughs> it. It's, it's like all the things have been thrown at me to try to get me to give up. <laughs> and you, I imagine, as well, and anyone else that's involved with this, is uh, there's always going to be uh, – uh, uh, there's a real enemy out there, and it's not just theoretical. It's not just – based on religious beliefs. Um, me and uh, Mark today, uh, Mark showed me an image that he had of him, uh, of an angelic being over his shoulder, and lo and behold, there was a heck of a lot more than an angelic being. I'm sure we're going to talk about that as well. But before we get going on this, Mark, as a brother in Christ, I think I would like us to start out in prayer. I'll start first, and you can go ahead if you'd like to. Just to invite yes. the Spirit of God into this conversation. I need it, because it's been a real yes. day for me. <laughs> okay, Mom. I'm, I'm glad we're doing this. Thank you. 
Almighty God, true and living God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the only God that ever was and never will be. In the name of your only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, our King of kings and Lord of lords, who paid for our sins and is there on the right-hand side of you, God, I, I ask of you in humility and sincerity that your presence will be with us, your Holy Spirit will be with us, and will guide us through this conversation that uh, we share uh, to the best of our ability and a little more, thanks to you and your influence, uh, uh, the truth and what this world needs to hear right now. If Maybe it's always needed to hear it, but at this day and age, God, it really needs to hear the truth, God. And I just ask you that you please bless this recording, that it will go out to the people that need to hear it. And that this time it will be recorded. And I want to ask you to humbly to bless uh, my brother Mark, that uh, you will guide him in his, in his words this evening and, and in his ministry. All praise and glory to you. Go to you, Heavenly Father. What a mighty God you are. What an awesome God you are. In the name of Jesus, I say this. Amen. Father, uh, with all my heart, I, I agree with my brother Michael about everything he said. And just to reiterate, we do pray that uh, you would be glorified tonight, uh, first and foremost, and that everything that's said um, would glorify you, that you would guide the flow of our discussion, that what we say and how we say it might bring honor to you, and that you would, as Michael said, um, bring the people of your choice into contact with this information, that it would be uh, an answer to prayer to them as far as uh, um, what they need to hear. And as Mike said, uh, the truth is so much... um, uh, lacking today, uh, especially in reference to the supernatural, the paranormal. So I'm so uh, excited and, and uh, honored to be on this show with my brother Michael. So I, I do pray for your protection upon him and his loved ones and me and my loved ones as any time we stand out and speak up for you and expose Satan's schemes, uh, we know that we invite uh, and open ourselves up to retribution. So uh, we know that and pray that the Son of Man, um, the divine warrior, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, would hammer uh, our enemies and be a, that the righteousness of Christ would be a canopy around us, around the t- technological equipment and everything and um, that all of us would be maximally blessed by you for Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. And uh, yeah, Mark, it's probably a good idea, although we, we've done it, you've done it several times and you've done it already with me in a recording that no one will ever hear. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, right. Maybe if we just go, you know, spend uh, a, f- a few minutes here and introduce folks to who you are, and your qualifications, and mm-hmm. why you're here uh, right now doing a recording with me. Um, and um, yeah, we'll go from there. It's fascinating stuff, folks. It's really the um, this this gentleman actually understands, if you will, both sides of the coin. And uh, what the answer to all this, these issues are that millions upon millions, if not billions, in fact, I'm pretty convinced that every yeah. single human being in this world has to deal with. <laughs> no one gets out of this one, brother. <laughs> yeah, it's a quote of Jim Morrison, no one gets out of here alive. <laughs> okay, about me, I can say this. Um, first and foremost, uh, I'm a sinner saved by the grace of God. And uh, that's my identity is is, uh, just a simple son, little boy, um, clinging to the cross of Christ moment by moment. Uh, That's that's who I am. I am am in the seven to ten kids as far as growing up and uh, subsequently went to college, got that degree, went on to get my master's of divinity and became a uh, Presbyterian pastor in 1985, um, was in that for many years, uh, planted 
a church and so on uh, here in my hometown of Greensboro, North Carolina. And um, Mary had three wonderful children um, and then now four grandchildren. And about, uh, see, I was, uh, it was about 10 years ago that I had a very significant encounter, basically watching TV, that rocked my world as far as the um, what was happening and what was being revealed on TV as far as true supernatural activity, and by that I mean demonic activity. And uh, God just gripped me, and my life was, was changed um, ever since then. Um, I... Uh, I always had a passion to preach the whole counsel of God when I was a preacher slash pastor. And um, so now I, I try to bring the uh, the theological uh, background that I have into the realm of an a- analyzing um, this exploding fascination with the paranormal in general and with ghosts in particular, which I see as a uh, manifestation of um, the um, ascendancy or, or um, growing worldview, uh, pagan worldview or New Age worldview, um, and, and that's another passion of mine. In in my book, I not only talk about um, ghosts, but I analyze it through a biblical worldview, and I did mention that earlier. So. I'll go, go into de- detail about that, but I guess you could say I have a dual passion. One is, is um, um, in addition, first of all, just loving God simply as a, as His Son um, is to is to educate both Christians and non Christians about the the um, the dangers of messing with the paranormal. The dangers just simply of being fascinated with the paranormal. And uh, a little quote that I've adopted um, is all paranormal activity is demonic activity um, for the simple reason that the Holy Spirit and angels do not do mischievous activity. So what we normally and typically refer to as paranormal activity is not stuff God or or angels will do. So if it's truly supernatural in nature, then it's, then it's going to be demonic if it's paranormal activity. So you call it simplistic if you want to, but um, I don't necessarily consider myself a simplistic person, but I have found that truth tends to be simple in Occam's razor type way. You know, we know which states that the uh, simplest explanation which explains the phenomena tends to be the true one. Uh, I'm 62 years old, so I'm not much of an idealist anymore. I'm more of a realist clinging to the cross. And uh, I see more and more how fallen the world is and how much I do cling to the cross. And I just have a real passion for, like I said, uh, Michael, educating uh, folks where they know Christ because there's just not much education from the pulpit, nor in Sunday school, regarding an issue that many, many, many Christians are curious or confused about, and that is, you know, the paranormal in general, and, you know, what is, what are ghosts? Many Christians are puzzled, you know, but you probably, there's just very few sermons that are preached in the United States or in, in the UK or elsewhere around the world uh, on this to- uh, these topics. So it's it's up to folks like you and I to pick up the ball and try to educate the body of Christ. And recently, um, I, I say this with, with tears of humility, but um, it's not very often that I can say I've done something unique. Uh, in fact, never. But a concept that is embraced by not just millions, but you alluded to it, actually billions of people, is a notion of residual energy. Uh, it's called different things by different people. Um, but as far as I know, I'm the only person in the world who has um, 
and I wrote about my book 10 years ago, but I recently did a seven-part series on YouTube. Uh, and like I said, it's the only one I know of in the world that does a, a sustained critique of a unexamined but extremely popular notion in the paranormal community, and that's the notion of residual energy and haunts. It is simply assumed to be true, and I have simply assumed that it's scientifically flawed and extremely harmful. So if you're interested in that, and if anybody has just the slightest bit of, you know, um, acquaintance with the paranormal, then they know something about residual energy, you know, Mike. So, uh, so please see that. And I'm not trying to draw attention to myself, but it's the one time I can say I don't know of anybody else who deals with it. So, And, and, and the thing is so humbling, man, is I, I'm not a scientist, nor the son of a scientist. <laughs> and uh, But I, I, I do my best. Um, you know, we can get back to that later if you want to, but that's my, that's my uh, recent I, I passion. Think, I, think it would, I think it would be a good idea. You can hear me, right? Me, yes, yeah, sir. Okay, good. Uh, it seems like every recording of recent, I've been saying that. So anyways, um, yeah, let's, let's go into that. We got so many things to talk about from the image that you sent me of the multiple demons that are right in front of your face, which I'm not surprised at all. And I have uh, totally convinced that uh, God's people, God's warriors, they have a, a special affinity for us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they, they, yeah. they like to hang out with us. They're waiting to pounce on us. Just waiting for that one <laughs> chance when we mess up and we make an opening. And I'm just totally convinced at this point that that is the case because it's really, the more closer you are to God, the more closer... Evil, and vice versa. That's right. So it's like, but anyways, uh, yeah. Let's talk about this because uh, you know this is a concept that many folks in the paranormal community might know of and think that they are wise of. Yeah, and there's also uh, gadgets, gadgets, all sorts of gadgets out there. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, to do this to be able to communicate with the quote dead which is madness in its own right. But it, and but not only that, but it's like unbiblical, and it's just, if you really... Anyways, I can go into all that, but I want you to get into this. I don't want to shut anybody off right away. Well, the thing is, is that even Christians who who have a solid uh, idea of, of um, you know, that ghosts, or found spirits and poltergeists, that, that all that stuff truly is demonic. Even many of, of those brothers and sisters still uh, embrace the notion of residual energy. And, um, I mean, I've, I've helped, to, by God's grace, to persuade uh, a number of people that, um, you know, who are in that category. And uh, so recently, I mean, it's kind of quite a burden when you realize that you're the only person in the world who... I don't know why God tapped me, Mike, Michael. Uh, I mentioned it in my book. You know, I mentioned it in my book nine years ago, and I don't know why somebody else didn't pick it up, but, I mean, it's extremely, it is one of the single most um, um, elemental, fundamental um, tenets of the paranormal community is a notion of residual energy and haunts because, if you think about it, uh, there are allegedly, according to the paranormal community, four kinds of hauntings. There is the intelligent human haunt, there is the poltergeist, there is the residual or non-intelligent haunt, which I'll explain in a second, and then there's a demonic. Um, but just for those who don't have prior knowledge, the residual energy is the um, the cause for the effect, and the effect is the haunt. Residual energy is allegedly causes a, a haunting, which looks looks uh, exactly like a paranormal activity, activity, but it's not paranormal. It's attributed to, to wholly natural causes. And what the paranormal community says is that um, uh, that and uh, there's two causes for residual energy haunts, and, and that is that if uh, there's a traumatic event, say, for example, somebody being uh, assaulted or, or something like that, 
or a, a violent uh, death. Those kinds of things can make an impression uh, upon the environment and um, an energy transfer upon uh, the environment. And there's kind of like a, the analogy that's used is, is like it's like it's videotaped, so to speak, by the walls of the uh, asylum or a prison or whatever. And then upon some certain cues, um, the anniversary of that event or whatever, um, it'll it'll loop back, you know, similar to a recorder or a film. Now, uh, that reason why it's so significant is that uh, according to most paranormal investigators, Michael, the majority of paranormal looking activity is residual. Act is residual in nature, meaning that it's not paranormal. It's 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 just um, traceable to natural causes, um, and uh, I, you know, right up front, I saw real problems with that notion. I mean, can you, can you imagine? Because what what we're talking about, to give you an example, extreme example, is that in Gettysburg, you know, there's there's the, there's the uh, phenomena of, of uh, multiple soldiers running through the woods that people see all the time. But what this is typically attributed to is called is the residual energy uh, model, and that is because of the traumatic energy that was um, dispersed uh, into the environment at that time during the Civil War is, is being replayed and looped back. Now stop for a second and think about that. We're talking about totally natural causes, which is is doing something that our most sophisticated uh, technology cannot do today, and that is to project out into the woods multiple um, uh, very real-looking soldiers running in tandem uh, through the woods, making noise and and uh, the smell of gunpowder and all that sort of thing. So it's my passion just to show that this has been used by Satan uh, in, in an incredible way and to harm so many people because the, the upshot of it is, is this, is that at the reveal, okay, paranormal investigators, if they come to, to diagnose your, your home, if they, then most of the time part of their reveal is um, – They'll say something like, okay, we believe that at least part, if not all, of the activity in your home is due to residual activity, meaning non-intelligent activity, all right? Which, and and they would then say, the great news is that you're not in any harm because obviously non-intelligent energy can't hurt you because there's no intent. There's no, you know... Energy can't have intent. It's just looping energy, like in uh, like a set recorder type thing, and that that just uh, deeply grieves me because Satan knows a good stupid theory when he sees it. And um, forgive me for using that. It's just it's so deeply flawed logically and scientifically that I have no idea why the paranormal community has not examined it and seen why it. Uh, I can go through real quick uh, just just the reasons, and I would really invite your audience to look at my YouTube page, Mark Hunneman, and I have a, I just just finished a, a, a series um, on, um, and it's, you need to see the totality totality of it um, in in order to see the fullness of my arguments um, against it. But it's not really based so much on God's written word, but by God's word in nature, um, that is, the laws of science. And uh, when we think of science, you know, that's not something that's autonomous from God. You know, these are God's laws in nature that he made. And um, particularly, I'll make reference to the first first, second, and third laws of thermodynamics, which are God's laws, but I'll just read real quickly, um, just real fast, um, what I was going to put in Facebook later on uh, as an advertisement for my YouTube thing, and that is uh, um, 
Let's see here. If you have any awareness of paranormal and you've heard of this concept, which hundreds of millions of people have embraced worldwide, uh, speaking from my heart and with tears of humility, did you also know that my YouTube series is the only series, serious critical analysis in the world of, of that concept that I'm aware of? Um, I'm convinced that it is seriously and scientifically and logically flawed and is causing unspeakable harm. Um, and here's some of the problems I have with it, Michael. Number one, it has no mechanism to explain how energy can transfer to the environment and play back. In science, the theory without a mechanism is like a car without an engine. And I ask people to see the definition and say we pity of theory and mechanism. There, there is no mechanism, uh, and, and it's actually recognized as such. Point number two, most evidence that's caught of, quote, alleged residual energy haunts is that of mundane activity and not traumatic events, which uh, is not what the model postulates, because the model postulates that it, it is the traumatic events that are, are being um, uh, emitted and that energy is being uh, caught, so to speak, um, in photograph, um, in a sense, by the rocks and, and so on. Um, but most of the evidence, if by paranormal investigators, of alleged residual energy is simply that of like a woman walking through a room through a door that used to be there, but it is not. Now, that's not traumatic energy and traumatic an event. That's just mundane activity. All right, and then thirdly, and perhaps most um, seriously, um, the notion of a residual haunt is violates the second and third laws of thermodynamics. You know, the first law of thermodynamics uh, states that is conservation. Energy cannot be created or destroyed, right? And the second law of thermodynamics speaks of how energy disperses once it's been left from poured it from its container, using layman's terms. <clears throat> it immediately, once energy leaves the container, it immediately disperses. It cannot cluster. And then the third law is that, is that this, this, this then dispersing energy must continue dispersing until it reaches equilibrium. Well, the reason why I say that the notion of residual energy in haunts is, is contradictory to to these absolute, by the way, absolute laws of thermodynamics is that they are implying, if not stating, that energy that when these traumatic events happen, that the energy clusters into some bricks, clusters and stays there not just for days, not just for weeks, but for years and centuries. And according to the ther laws of thermodynamics, that whether it's electrical or thermal energy, as soon as it's released from its um, uh, container, the human body, it's going to disperse into the atmosphere. And it cannot, it cannot cluster. Energy cannot cluster. If you think of the biggest display of energy emission in uh, in nature, lightning, a billion volts, it hits a tree in your backyard. How long do you have to wait before you can touch that tree that it's hit before you're safe? You can touch it right away. There's no energy that's clustered there. That's, that's just a, a clear example of the law of thermodynamics, or if you put, a, you know, uh, some, uh, you know, a um, um, thermodynamics, like if you put a piece of ice in, in a glass, that's, that's thermal um, transfer, okay, where the cold is, is being transferred into the glass until it reaches equilibrium. Or as I use, the illustration I use, Michael, is in my video is that I, I put one drop of food coloring in a clear glass of water and without agitating or stirring it after just a couple of minutes it will it will disperse into all the you know throughout the whole entire container until the the entire water has been um fully uh, and equally um, 
filled with this um, uh, with this food coloring, which has been substantially watered down. But if you think of an event like a person dying on, say, Gettysburg, or here in my hometown where there was a serious um, revolutionary uh, war battle, um, <clears throat> the container is much larger um, because if when if there's any energy, <laughs> because when a person dies, they have to really they don't have any energy, but just. For argument's sake, saying there is energy emitted, it is according to the second and third laws of the thermodynamics. Dynamics it must disperse into the atmosphere, which last I heard was around 100 miles high, and it definitely surrounds the entire Earth. So a better analogy would be that of putting a drop of of um, food coloring into the ocean. Now, is the, is the food coloring destroyed? Nope, but it is really enormously, hugely watered down, losing all of its distinctiveness and any potential, um, you know, to color anything. And the point being is that any energy that is emitted in these events that people are talking about is like being dropped into the ocean, or really, I'm talking about something bigger, the atmosphere surrounding the Earth. That's what electrical and thermal energy, which is emitted from our, it cannot be imprinted upon the surroundings. It can't. The first of all, there's no mechanism for it. And then secondly, the, the, the second and third laws of thermodynamics say that energy must disperse. It cannot cluster in, in any kind of surface. Thus, you know, the idea of it occasionally um, popping up and looping is an absurdity in light of this walk. It's just simply uh, an absolute contradiction to that uh, absolute law. Um, and then, uh, I, I don't want to keep saying this, but, you know, um, regarding this, scientists cannot reproduce this alleged natural phenomenon in the lab and you know what they say about theories that cannot be done in the lab, Michael. Um, they are not really worth their weight. So, okay, uh, I'm just looking through my notes real quick here, but the means by which paranormal investigators distinguish between an intelligent and non-intelligent or residual uh, haunt is notoriously subjective, quick, and capricious, and non-uniform. Uh, that is, there's no scientific criteria that can be applied to de to determining between what is an intelligent and non-intelligent paranormal activity because they all, they would even admit that, that, that uh, paranormal activity and residual activity look, smells, and sounds the same. Um, but supposedly, if you you know if you do an EVP and you get a, uh, an irrelevant response or no response at all, or some of the examples people give is if the cold spot is moving, uh, it means that the um, the haunt is intelligent. But if the cold spot's static um, or stationary, that means it's it's a residual or non-intelligent and um, the non-intelligence of, of that notion is just shown by the fact. Let me ask you all a question. Uh, are those of you who are listening to this, are you able to stand still? <laughs> and are you intelligent while you're standing still? <laughs> the answer obviously is yes. So are, are demons able to, to, to remain stationary? And are they intelligent? And the answer obviously is yes. So... And then lastly, some people will do the outrageous and try to appeal to string theory or some higher spiritual laws to um, defend the notion of residual energy, but both of those are, are logically and biblically faulty because uh, there is no such thing as higher spiritual laws. It's God himself who does the miracles, not some spirit, higher spiritual realm. It's a very personal act of God that that, uh, you know, does miracles, Michael, not just some, you know, higher spiritual realm. Uh, so I'll, I'll stop there. 
you know, if you have any questions about my little spiel. <laughs> me? No. I mean, it, it makes sense to me as far as the laws of thermodynamics and that, uh, and of course, you know, we are dealing with what we, you and I know is something completely different from <laughs> that. I guess we, yeah, this is how I have say it. What we are dealing with, they don't, they're not a, it's not applicable to the laws of thermodynamics. And what I mean by that is we're dealing with demonic entities that are not. Yeah. In fact, I know for for certain that, I mean, I've, uh, one of the most amazing things is how these things can, can actually stand, be in one position for so long. I mean, humanly, we couldn't even do it. Yeah. You're talking about standing because they're just they just stay to stay one place forever. So, well, that's, um, I mean, that, that that that's a distinct point, though, is that once once you raise the fact or the truth that it's not see, what I was doing, Michael, was just simply a a um, taking well, them at their um, you know at, t- at face value, taking their theory and then dismantling it, you know, by assuming for argument's sake. Okay, let's assume for argument's sake that what you're saying is true. Let's see if it stands up to science. But what you're saying is is true, is that it, it is in fact demonic activity. In fact, that was going to be one of my last and I think most persuasive arguments, is that <laughs> Satan is Satan Sorry. is a supreme op- opportunist and hunter of souls, and you know he's learning too uh, all the time, yeah. and he learns from us. And when he sees uh, the paranormal community coming up with a notion that has become ensconced, so ensconced in the paranormal community that it's, that it's not, it's so assumed that it's not even examined. It's just assumed to be true. And right. so what he happens, don't we think that Satan is intelligent enough to have his demons act non-intelligent so that um, they will not be, because um, if they act like, um, and if they can persuade the paranormal investigators that they are non-intelligent, then that will mean that they won't bring the cavalry out, namely the demonologists, and, and boot them out of there. So demons will act stupid or non-intelligent all day long, if that will cause them or give them the ability to stay in a location because they're so territorial anyway, and um, you know what I'm saying is that they are opportunists and and they will um, um, they work like in the fight. realm of ideas and beliefs all the time. So like a serpent, like a serpent that waits and that just waits and waits for that opportunity to strike. And you yeah. know, but the funny, yeah. the funny thing is, is, you know, cause you know, so God called you to do this and to this side of the, uh, this, I guess the elements of, uh, universal witchcraft is what I call it. And then my, God asked me to do, you know, of all things Bigfoot. I mean, I wasn't even interested. We talked about this already. But, you know, and how the similarities are just profound, overwhelming. And one of the things is, uh, well, going back to you with the uh, scientific approach to something that we're dealing with, which is, uh, well, demonic, and uh, we're dealing with evil spirits and and their nature, which is, you I, wanted, very I wanted to just say that, but you know, there's nothing in the Bible about residual energy, so I had to resort to you know the science and the logic. But I'm sorry for interrupting you, Mike. No, 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 because because I I deal with similar issues when it comes to the Bigfoot community, because you know it's like it has to be an animal, it has to be this or that, because it it fits in line with a person's paradigm their way of thinking their world view and right. with science you see part of the problem is that most people that are in whether it's bigfoot or you know the paranormal community aren't really applying science at all not, not at all. real because science. if they no, were you know, right. no because if they would apply the, the scientific method this whole thing about res, residual hauntings mm-hmm. it, 
can't stand the mustard. So these people, right. first of all, they're, they're, wor- they're looking at the world. Their worldview is, is, is based out of what they believe is science, which is really what most people have been taught is a religion called scientism. I don't know if you th- looked much into it. Oh, this. yeah. No, oh, no, yeah, very much so, because it's all autonomous. Put, it's people, yeah. t- people trying to study or analyze God's world apart from God's word, which is a very unreasonable thing to do. That's what autonomous thinking is, is self-law, is whether it's autonomous science or autonomous philosophy. That well, was basically... Because it's, was, it's, uh, there's a step further, though, you know, uh, which is the problem is they're not really even using critical thinking. Uh, they're right. not really using their God-given uh, gift of critical thinking and challenging the things that they believe in. They just don't challenge it at all. So and so said this, therefore it must be. They were there before me, and they've got the name, That's the right. recognition, the title, and instead of questioning and saying, "Listen, how do I know that they know? How do I know?" Right. That what I'm being told is the truth. How do I go about to Michael? This there out? is no there. There is no clearer example of that that I know of than the notion of residual energy because it is virtually unexamined in the many, many thousands, um, millions of people who are into uh, into the paranormal. They it's just unexamined, and um, there are. There's one person I know of, Tim Yo- Yohe, who wrote a book in an attempt to um, explain it, and that was like three years ago. He's a friend of mine, um, well, an acquaintance, really. But he's the only one that I really know of who's even tried to explain it. Um, but um, you're surely the only one who's who's really trying to critique it. And it needs to be, as Paul said, torn down or demolished because it's an argument that's raised up against um, against God in Second Corinthians 10, you know, where he speaks about that. Because it's caused so much enormous harm when you tell a person, a client, that they don't have to worry about the demonic activity in their home because it's non-intelligent. That breaks my heart. And there's a holy... Um, you know, fervor inside of me that that wants to expose this horrible lie of Satan. You know that that it can be demonic activity can be explained away um, as being harmless because it's just natural causes um, that are behind. You know, the moving of keys or the footsteps or apparitions, shadows moving around. Um, it's just ridiculous and. It breaks my heart just because it's like it's like a doctor misdiagnosing a um, um, a, a patient. My, my sister, um, I say this in um, in the series. But my sister Janet, um, um, she was misdiagnosed uh, her cancer and she died because of that. And well, it wasn't until an intern several months into her sickness, which they were saying was flu saw the spot on our liver, but it had originated elsewhere. So um, what I'm seeing is that the same thing's happening, is that there's a spiritually cancerous idea that's going around or or a spiritually cancerous entity, I mean demons that are in people's homes that's being called benign by the paranormal community uh, by labeling it, you know, non-intelligent energy. And, you know, Satan, you know, we can we can sin, Michael, not just with our hands, uh, our, our actions, and our words. We can sin with our minds. What we believe and what we think, um, you know, I don't know why people don't ever think about it, the fact that we can sin with our minds as well. But if we misinterpret Scripture, we sin. And if we believe something that's contrary to Scripture, we sin. And this notion of residual energy is definitely contrary to Scripture. Um, no, there's not, you know, specific or explicit statements about it because it has a, um, 
it's such a modern type notion, but there are principles because the basic notion behind residual energy is the pagan worldview, the energy with a capital E is ultimate reality. But we know that the tripersonal God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is ultimate reality, not energy. Um, so that's why it's, it's become so popular these days, uh, the notion of residual energy. Um, and I don't see it as a coincidence that the notion of residual energy has has coincided with the popularity of um, the New Age worldview, which you know started in the mid '60s with the Beatles and has just um, um, ramped up ever since then. So, I mean, what do you even hear Christians saying, sending positive energy to you, um, that type thing? I want no positive energy sent to me. I want I want prayers to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that you referred to in your prayer. You know, I mean, I refer, you've heard that, that, haven't you? Send you positive vibes or something like that. Oh, I used to be in the New Age uh, uh, movement, so I used to go to the before the Lord got a hold of me. I attended Unity Church and all that stuff. So, oh yeah, mm-hmm. I know all about it. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, yeah, and it's it's it, 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 it's and. Uh, there's no such thing, and um, and uh, it's just uh, a big farce. But you know, people want to believe in that stuff um, because they want to believe that they have. Uh, I guess you know it comes down to they have power to manipulate their reality enough. The, you know, here's the thing: that, you know, without the Word of God and without the Spirit of God coming into your life, uh, there is like literally no hope for you. In this fallen yeah. world, and you will basically, uh, your whether you realize it or not, is you have a pagan uh, worldview that's really based on witchcraft. You're basically uh, a low grade witch. That's what you're trained to be, so that they can, you know, uh, manipulate those in power can manipulate you, and so. Um, if you don't come to, to the Lord, or the Lord doesn't come to you and get a hold of you, you don't cry out to Him. Uh, you're just going to believe all sorts of silliness, and it's all sorts of. Basically, right. when it comes down to, if you're really honest about it, you say, well, "That's what I believe." But that doesn't mean what you believe is true. And so, if you don't challenge your belief system, and you say, "You know, I want evidence. I want to see evidence of." Yeah why uh, I believe what I believe. And, uh, you know, if, uh, and um, it should, you know, I know for me, for a fact, the reason why I believe uh, in not only the Word of God, but in my, my God and Savior, my Lord Jesus Christ, is because of the totality of all that it, He has taught me through His Holy Spirit, through and it's uh, true. Experience. Yeah, it's just true and experience, and it's just you're just like. Uh, well, my, my you know, but why? But, but in the early part, in the beginning. Yeah, in, in the early part of um, C.S. Lewis's book, The Screw Tape Letters, he has a very revealing uh, conversation uh, between uh, uncle and nephew. The demon, and in one of them, he says something like to effect. Um, don't let your patient um, think about um, beliefs logically. Get him to think. Get him to believe in something because it's manly, or it's progressive, or it makes him feel good, or it's utilitarian. Uh, just put a just put a dozen in um, usually incompatible philosophies in his head and make him swim around, but don't let him think logically in terms of evidence and, and whether or not something's true or false. And that's what's happened in in our culture, Mike. Because of the pagan worldview, we need to change the way that we evangelize because the very notion of truth, absolute truth, has been um, jettisoned. And we, we have to deal with what is known as epistemology first. Or we will start. We will talk past each other in our conversation. Epistemology is just a big word in philosophy for philosophy for how we know what we know. 
um, our knowledge. It's a theory of knowledge. And, you know, for a Christian, everybody has a basic criterion for how they determine uh, what is right and wrong and, and you know, what is the nature of reality, ultimate reality, and uh, how, you know, what happens after death and so on. Everybody, it's not just a Christian with their Bible, you know, that has an ultimate criterion. Everybody unconsciously uh, usually has a worldview for one and then specifically as an ultimate criterion by which they appeal to, and it's usually their autonomous reason or feelings, you know, feelings. If it feels right, then I'm going to believe it. So they don't operate on the uh, on the, the field that you were talking about as far as true and falsity. The people are now believing things, Michael, if it feels right. And, it, you know, it's not as if they thought this through. I'm going to believe something because it feels right. It's just the kind of, um, smog that's in the atmosphere that people are breathing, uh, the demonic smog of that is clouding people's thinking capacities, which is why I, you alluded to critical thinking, and one of the most important things that Christians need to learn today is critical thinking skills. And I, I, I taught that to middle schoolers for two or three years was logic or critical thinking, and it's amazing. You can take the most intelligent scientist, Michael, but and I can't. Some, there are many times where I can't keep up with their abstruse theorizing, but I can I can tell when a person is making a um, a, a logical um, inference that uh, doesn't follow. You know, a non sequitur. I can spot that a mile away, and um, so. You know, Christians, they need that ability to to spot, um, you know, truth and non-truth um, from a mile away, um, basically by immersing themselves in God's Word and understanding what a biblical worldview is and so on. But I'm sorry for rambling. I think I interrupted you. Oh, anyway. no. no, that's okay. I didn't. Uh, so... <clears throat> So we uh so this residual energy is a big principle that's uh and a doctrine of uh the paranormal community Cute. uh which has not been challenged by the the folks and of course you know there's variables involved in this um okay with the, one thing, okay, there, we, of course, you and I know that there's a spiritual element to this, and as you you alluded to, but you actually brought up uh, the demonic influence that's, that's influencing people who are um, who do who don't believe necessarily that demons are real or that they're they believe in the in ghosts, and they don't understand the, the, the abilities that demons actually have to mimic things like. Silver yeah. World, Silver Silver War soldiers to trick you and fool you, or Bigfoot, or Dogmen, or ghosts, or all sorts of other things. They'll give you what you want. Um, yeah, they'll give you what you easy. want exactly because they're tricksters and they're deceivers. So, and uh, so you know, um, so here it's like where you, you just want to throw up your hands and say, well, well, why are you really doing this? Well, have you asked yourself really why you're doing this? Now I know, I imagine that of quite a few people, the reason why they do it is because they had their own experiences, and and God forbid that they would actually look into the Bible for any kind of reference, because yeah. it's just a religion. <laughs> it's just a book, you know. That's just a holy book for a particular religion, and that couldn't possibly be true. Um, Mike, what, but, what are you, you know, referring to? Getting involved in what? Uh, doing doing what? about paranormal investigating or, or what I'm yeah, doing? Yeah, I mean, I'm what, what, no, not you. I understand where you're coming from. I'm trying to figure out if that person, their worldview is is of the world and that you're, they're claiming to be. And I've, I've heard folks, I had a, a, a guy and a gal who, in my community, my area, that does this. And as of yet, they said they have never found any paranormal uh, or, or any like hauntings 
that couldn't be explained uh, by uh, reasonable means. You know what I mean? A thing, you know, something that uh, you could explain with the environment or whatever. That's you another, and I both that's know. Another, you, know you, you know what? It's not as if demons can't just be quiet and shut up too. And you know, yeah, I, I bet that the, the a good number of the people that they went to their homes probably were were crying after they left um, because they didn't believe them, um, just simply because the the demons didn't come out and play on cue, didn't dance for them on cue. Well, my my question in a nutshell is is you know why are these folks doing what they're doing? Is it simply for to are there, I mean I imagine some are genuinely interested to find the truth. Oh yeah, they just. But then there's I also got to be the, the thrill circle, three the thrill seekers, and then there's just got to be you know it's just like I just I um I'm trying to figure out why in the and well it's just uh well take you take for example if you're, if you're a child, you, you, if you got you got you got a young young child right okay right. um God forbid. I won't even talk about your child, but just say, I know, I know this is the case uh, for 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 some people as to, as to why they do it. Uh, they've lost a child, or they've lost a loved one, and so they, uh, it's just a natural push into the field to start investigating. Personally speaking, I don't know anybody who's lost more. Family members uh, than myself, mainly because of just how big my family is. But I've not only lost both mom and dad, but I've lost a brother at age 20. I, I lost a sister at age 43, and I lost two other sisters at age 50 and at age 50. Four siblings I have lost, um, well, three in the last 10 years. And then one, one way back when I was 17 years old. So, you know, I I understand viscerally, um, and maybe it's one of the reasons why God has called me to this. I understand viscerally the uh, under the the draw towards the par- paranormal due to death of a loved one, um, and that's why. I, you know, there is a tenderness in my heart towards people who have lost loved ones, but the devil is so cruel, as you know, Michael, and oh, yeah. they'll take the loss of a loved one and they'll mimic that little child that died or parent that died. They'll mimic them all day and all night long just to play with that person and, you know, until they start opening doors and then they start oppressing them and, um, that's what angers me against the uh, the evil one. Just how pure evil and cruel, um, you know, Satan and his minions are. If we thought that Stalin or Hitler were evil, uh, you know, at least they had some vestigial remains of being made in God's image. But these creatures are pure evil. Um, uh, that's kind of a scary thought when you think about it. I mean, there's nothing good about them. And, um, you know, going back to those pictures that uh, I sent to you when I was with my girl friend, um, you know, it just showed the perverseness and, and evil of of uh, their presence. Yep. Lots of them in that picture, too, wasn't there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what did you think yes. of that angel? Or I mean, not see me. I shouldn't, say, I shouldn't put it like that. What did you think of that entity that was on, actually on my shoulder, the bright thing? I never got your take yeah. on that. Well, and by the way, folks, I will use this image uh, uh, for the uh, the page for this interview, so you'll see it, the image. Um, Thank you. But yeah, the the uh, I okay. This has been my experience. Whenever these things have been around, that I've ca- well, they're always around. But whenever I capture them in the right mm-hmm. location, which is where you were at in a very good location, for some reason these demons that really like 
it was right in right. Mike Michael it was right in the main battlefield of where. Yeah, well, I, I don't. Blood I, I don't think shed. that. I don't think. Well, yeah, blood might have been shed, but I don't think that's necessarily as important as the trees, which are living life forms. Okay. And these things want to indwell whatever they can, and you know. I, I personally believe that there is enough of these things out there that each and every one of us can have a legion. And I think most people actually do actually have a legion in them already without, the, you know, some deliverance. Yeah. I think that you pretty much are, are under control of these things. Um, so, you know, I find them, catch them a lot, and I see other people catch them a lot around trees and around groves and around that kind of thing, whether there's a battlefield, a cemetery or not. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, uh, it seems to be there's more of them in those certain locations, like a battlefield or a... But that, I don't think that necessarily means anything, except that they're just, um, uh, you know, uh, because well, people I mean, are there. You, take, what you, people what are there taking the pictures. Right one, though. Well, do, 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 see, well, I know there's no way... Because you're asking, I, me, I, know, I know we can't tell by appearance. I know we can't get a definitive answer, but... Yeah. You know, that picture is important to me for a number of reasons. I really care about the lady that took the picture, and it's, I've never seen that. It was on, actually on my shoulder, uh, as you know. And um, so I, I know that, you know, you can't get a definitive answer, but um, you had explained well, and shown. Well, I, can that, tell you, I can tell you this. I can tell you this is that from my experience and, you know, what I've when, when the the light, those bright light entities being you know you want you know are are captured. Then you're going to also is a guarantee that you're going to also be capturing a bunch of heads and everything else too. So uh, there is an association with them. Are they a uh, protector? I mean, I haven't seen that yet, but I I've definitely seen these. It, oh, okay, orbs. Orbs, yeah. if you look inside an orb, they're the same hideous faces that are in those orbs that are in, that you that you and I you know, which you captured in around those trees. Yeah. yeah. And, and so um Well wow. I, I don't you know, people ask, you know, why don't you take get pictures of uh God's angels, and I'm like, well, they just don't pose for you, you know. They're just not there to entertain us. I don't well, this, know why this God. Might, this might this might be an angel. I don't know. It's bright. It's got blue, bluish looking wings. Nobody. You know, I, I look to you because you're more of an expert in this area, Michael. But to me, um, I like to think, and I'm not. I, I don't base my belief on what I'd like for it to be, but um, that's what the person I was with thought it was, but you know, given her past, I, <laughs> I wouldn't really go with her opinion, but anyway, yeah, you know, it's like I, the angel I, of light I, principle. I, you know, yeah. angel of light principle. I, I you know, the, the, it's just to say, oh, you know, uh, the safe thing is to say, you know, I, I I don't know. I mean, you know, when you, you read in the Bible, as you and I know, you read in the Bible about angelic beings. Um, they don't seem to, you know, they're they're not there to to, to mess around. So, was it the right. angelic being that was protecting you? Why not? I don't know. I mean, as it also uh, one of my the potential. Let's be, these things have the ability; these demonic entities have the ability to appear as a light. Angel of Light. So, was it one exactly. of them? Was it them? You know, I and then and then you, um, you know, uh, but yet they were obviously they were stand backish. They weren't like going after you. I I know what it's like when they go after you. Believe me, I know what it's like when they go after you. <laughs> you'll me know too. because you'll be you know you will feel the fear of. Of these things, uh, whether you want. <laughs> I had it happen when I was writing my book. When I was writing my book, um, I was slammed physically, slammed back in my chair. That's when I knew I was on the right path. Um, writing my book, seeing ghosts through God's eyes, I was so well. First of all, what happened, Michael, was that just out of the blue, pumped into me 
all right, was a sense of dread and fear, all right? It just overcame me. It came out of nowhere. Um, there was nothing to be fearful of. All of a sudden, it just, you know, that demonic, the way they can do. And then I was pushed back in my chair and had that paralysis type thing for a couple of seconds. And then I heard this, and it's only, well, no, well, Anyway, I was sitting in my easy chair typing and pushed in my chair and there was an audible voice that cussed me out, called me a very uh, um, unflattering name. I can't say it on radio. <laughs> so, um, and then I rebuked it in Jesus' name and it was over with. Um, but The answer you know, to the problem. Gonna, yeah. The answer is the whole issue right there. There's the solution. So, but that's not very that's not very appealing to an awful lot of people of the world. But you know, um, yeah, uh, this whole thing. Obviously, uh, the spirit of God was protecting you, and you know, this just leads into the the next question, which I I, I presented to you because uh, I was listening to you and Lori talk about angels, and I didn't quite get the whole. I mean, mm-hmm. the whole message uh clearly when i was listening to it but you rectified that because i asked you i said am i making a mistake by asking god to you know to loosen his angels for protection because apparently Uh, people pray actually pray to angels and that never crossed my mind although i must tell you um i have family members that that does and uh oh there's many tell you yeah i mean there are many people um my um Dana Emmanuel along with Laura and now Ivani, uh the, the four of us um By, kind of team, teamed up. Dana Dana will be with me tomorrow. Which will be That's right, tomorrow. I understand that. Now Ivani it's like it's like um it's we're wonderful. Together. We're all together with you yeah. and it's kinda of like yeah. a um a uh, fraternity of I mean, these these dear sisters have become very close. But we, Laura and I, discussed it. Um, we're a, we're and a the, crew of demon busters, is what we are. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. And we really, we really appreciate it, Michael, because you know we're doing our thing, and you're you're the one who enables the word to be able to get to be got out. In addition to your other work, and but it, with reference to angels, is that. Um, you know, they they are our servants. When we die, we don't become angels. Um, we will actually judge them, um, in First Corinthians uh, 7. And meaning, uh, as far as judging, it would be the, the fallen angels. But we, we are higher than the, the good angels as well. They, you know, we're in awe of them, and rightly so, but they're more in awe of us. And, um, but, the St. Michael prayer is something that should not be prayed, um, and we should never pray to angels um, because uh, prayer is an act of worship, and God and God alone uh, should be the one that we worship. So for those of you who are listening to this, please never ask an angel themselves, nor pray the prayer to St. Michael, which is very common in paranormal circles. Michael does not want you praying to him. It's uh, repugnant to him. What we do see in Scripture is people, um, on a few occasions, asking God to send his heavenly warriors. You know, in the Old Testament, God is frequently called the God of hosts, you know, which is a uh, military term. Uh, God, the the general of the heavenly armies, the, the the angels, and so it's entirely appropriate. In the question that you asked, to say, Lord, along with your Holy Spirit, please send your warrior angels to protect me and my loved ones, uh, in you know, thus in such a situation. But um, for those who are listening, please don't ever pray to an angel. Ask God to uh, to send them. Yeah, we have the, the, the holy and the Holy Spirit should uh, obviously overrides even the angels, right? Which is one of the things that, that a lot of people don't seem to think about. You know, they say, you know, um, it's yeah. just the way God has constructed reality. He could have done 
uh, you could have done it without uh, angels, um, but he chose to use angels as his means of a- agents in spiritual warfare, you know, as we see in Daniel 10 and 11, where you know um, the archangels are fighting and Michael's coming and so forth. And um, Ephesians 6, it's just um, part of the way that God has ordained life to be is angelic in Hebrews one fourteen, you know, angelic uh, a help. And when I say that all demonic, excuse me, all paranormal activity is demonic activity, I, I don't mean in any way to to diminish the frequency and the beauty of angelic uh, assistance. We'll never know the side of heaven how ma- how many times. Um, We've either encountered angels, you know, in person, or you know how much they have protected us, um, in in daily situations. Um, so, well, you, we do know too from scripture, right, that only a third of the hosts of heaven fell, right? So it's right. If yes. there's anything that's reassuring, is that uh, God's army is much larger than the devil's yeah. army. So it's it's probably a good idea to to ask God to. Uh, Send some of his uh, faithful servants, uh, his angels, right. uh, our way too for protection. Uh, I don't think there's any harm in that at all. I mean, it's no, been a good no. idea for me. And, re- and, and, if, that... and if there's if the number of demonic entities that I've captured and other people have captured, uh, I mean, this place is crawling. They're like cockroaches. They're like fleas. So this is one of the biggest things is once, you know, I guess what God wants me to do is like with all these images is to really just present this whole thing to me. But say, listen, these things That's are very real. valuable, Michael. That is very, <laughs> very valuable ministry you have as far as giving evidence of the um, population um, of demonic entities. Um, I mean, that is invigorating and um instructive to me as a reminder of of how um how present they are and 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 how how many numbers uh these things are and how you can have thousands of them uh entering into just one person um since they're not spatial in nature um you know there's there's no problem as far as them stacking on top of each other and that sort of thing so uh but you know, remember that Michael um, corresponds to Satan, uh, not Satan with God. Uh, they're not equals. Um, God is the infinite creator, and Satan is is a creature. But the equivalent to Satan uh, is is Michael the archangel, not God. Uh, people need to to realize that as well. I mean, God right. can as will squash him with just you know a blink of an eye, and um, so, but you know so so yeah you know, so uh, you have this uh, these folks are going out there and they got their gadgets and their equipment and um, and it doesn't have to be a house. I mean, I see these this basically the same folks that are uh, uh, into Bigfoot are doing the same thing, which is just you know up. A variance of the same subculture, which is not really, it's becoming more and more popular, which is a bit of disturbing because people seem to be really yearning for a, a spiritual experience and um, yeah. they don't they don't seem to be, uh, many people complain because they don't seem to get it at church, uh, but mm. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's only through, I guess, maturation with the walk with the Lord is that you realize that that experience happens with Him. <laughs> it's not well, supposed so to be the, that's, the, that's, the, how, the, that's how the devil. That, that's how the devil. He's smart, and he knows how how drawn we are to uh, the, Im- the immediacy of a felt experience, and. Um, when, when, because Satan and his minions can cause um, very extravagantly pleasurable uh, experiences, and um, that's why it's highly addictive for so many paranormal investigators, either investigating or um, obsessing over evidence review. But it's there's something very electric about 
encountering the supernatural and um but not everything that glitters is gold in the supernatural realm and folks need to to realize that and that you know it's um the bible says taste and see that the lord is good but frankly bottom line is that in in the true christian life there's a lot of slogging involved where we don't feel good on many days we're not feeling hyper super spiritual that needs to be acknowledged and that's why i don't like the super spirituality of you know of assuming that the christian is always going to feel feel like a more than conqueror because paul himself said you know yeah it's it's out of our felt weakness fear and trembling i can't do and so forth that uh, God's power is perfected in our weakness, and there, you know, the, the real Christian true spirituality is going to acknowledge the fact that many days, Michael, we 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 slog through life. Um, yeah, we have the oh, yeah. we have we have the resurrection power of Christ in us, but it's a it's a paradox. It's the enigma of the um, now and not yet that theologians speak about, and. You know, it's just we need to remember that feelings are a beautiful thing. Uh, God made them. Uh, but that's the draw. We talked about why people are drawn to the paranormal, and, and that's because there's more of an emphasis in the, the demonic on that immediate gratification of feelings than within Christianity. Um, yeah, there, there can and should be uh, emotions involved there, Michael, but it, it's. Um, you know, the, the devil. He he knows he knows how to hook people with, as I said, extravagant uh, experiences, which we which we long for. And you know, when people jettison God, throw him out of the picture, they're still made in His image, and they long for spiritual reality. So that's why so many people are being um, are being drawn to the paranormal because or, you know, Bigfoot or UFOs is because it fills that void. We talked about this before in, in the lost uh, tape <laughs> of of where people are, there, there is a sense of loss of magic in, not like a K, but, you know, sense of, there's a loss of wonderment, you know, with scientism and the materialism that reigned for so long in our in our culture it brought in its wake um a real deadness of spirit in our culture and people have awakened to that and they they want they want magic back in their lives uh they they want a sense of wonderment at the supernatural and so that's when it's so dangerous when the paranormal or the bigfoots and the ufos the ghosts are right there for satan to use to fill that you know, as Augustine said, the God-shaped void, uh, which, you know, only God can fill, let's paraphrase. But Satan, you know, he'll he'll certainly try to mimic, you know, feeling that, that void that we have for, um, you know, longing for spiritual reality, something, you know, to give some spiritual, um, uh, you know, meat our experience in our lives uh, and some kind of excitement and some kind of excitement too but here's the other thing too uh as i'm gonna you know i'll share once again with you uh what we talked about my experience and i think i think you understand where it come from and then I'll, like let's talk a little bit about some of your um your encounters your 100 uh you know, opportunities to do some deliverance and get rid of some of these things. And but you okay. know, uh, for me, uh, when, when I uh, when I first went out into the field to quote unquote do Bigfoot research, <laughs> and, uh-huh. which was you know, which means you know, I actually got in the car and went out and to the edge of the woods, and I told you that you know, the very first time I did it. Within a, less than a minute, I found a Bigfoot structure, and it was huge. And I got pictures of it, a video of it, and all that kind of stuff. And um, and 
That's weird, man. I'll tell you one thing. There's some spiritual activity going on between you and I in this conversation as far as the line. Really? <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I'm hearing little things going, uh, anomalies. Uh, uh, I have a tendency to do that. Anyways, um, uh, <laughs> it, it, it soon became like addictive, like almost like I had to go out again and go to go again. I, I'm glad I, I guy got a hold of me real fast. Within a couple of yeah. weeks, I finally realized I was dealing with something evil and not something, you know, some kind of animal or some kind of uh, interdimensional supernatural being, per se. But it was, it was strictly de- demonic. And um, yeah, that drive, I really had to pray for God to relieve that for, for me. And yeah. uh it's still in me, you know, and so one of the things I also do is temper myself. Is so, you know, like this year I've only gone out twice, and I don't spend a long time out there. I get in there and get out and just, you know, I do a lot of praying, praying up and all that before I even go out. I ask for protection and just say, God, this is the reason why I'm doing this. Please support me. This is what you want me to do. Let me do it. But don't just, Are, you I don't want to, I, Are you going for evidence, like with the pictures type thing? Or, or yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't know if you saw it in the videos like uh, that I've done yet of me mm-hmm. going on the field and yeah. filming like tree tree structures and all that kind of stuff. And yeah. <clears throat> this last one, I didn't even spend that much time even looking for demonic entities or so easy to spot. I, I just got it was like you know God, I got so many other things. <laughs> I already know they're yeah. there. I mean, they're everywhere. I know they're they're. They were all around us, God, but you know. So, but you just my, have I, a really keen uh, eye, man. You do. Yeah, you, know, you might take it for granted, well, but you just have a really keen eye. Well, the problem here's the thing, though. Uh, the the issue is is this quote unquote obsession, which I think leads to possession. Yes. And destruction, and you know, like I've told you, when I went out, uh, that within you know. A couple of weeks, I started peeing blood. And yeah, this is quite a right. common thing for me. And you brought up before uh, about the, the the health issues that happen with people that are in the paranormal field, and, and these things are they yeah, have well, the capacity. Yeah, let me interject real quick. Sk- well, one of the okay. one of the deep dark. Uh, I'll just say this, and I'll let you keep going. I, I interject for I forget. Uh, it's very important for people who listen to this is that one of the deep, dark secrets to the paranormal community that they don't like to talk about is that in a highly in, inordinate percentage of paranormal investigators uh, are dealing with two things, um, physical, serious physical ailments, sicknesses, and then secondly, quote, paranormal activity of their own, in their own homes. Um, those two things. And having said that, um, uh, go ahead, Mike. I'm, I'm sorry. I just okay. want to throw that out. Yeah. And I want to apologize for saying the word that I said. I should have said I was peeing blood. I don't piss. I guess same thing. I guess. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I, was in, I, I lived in <laughs> England for a couple of years, and so it just comes out. To, you know, it's, that's what, that's how they describe their rain. It's pissing. Anyways. Uh, the, the point being here is what I want to bring up and I want you to talk about is the fact that this obsession that leads to ultimately destruction, mm-hmm. and, and, and and this is real, and I've I'm not the only person who said this, and I've had numerous people this year alone who are in the Bigfoot community that you know ended up in emergency room and all that kind of stuff. And okay, I know people get sick and all that, but it's even deeper than that, folks, because these things. It's just how uh, often the percentage of people. They'll destroy your families. They'll destroy your marriages, yeah. uh, yes. your, your relationships. They'll, they'll do break all you down. sorts of things. Yes, to break Physically, you down. Physically, like, emotionally, spiritually, financially, relationally, they'll break you down. Yep. So if anybody thinks that they have friends, I mean, I know witches. And one of the things I, I'm wrestling with is doing a video in particular, male witch that is just thrilled to death that he has the ability to conjure these things up and take film of them. And I'm just like, you know, uh, this guy is, he's ruining himself, he's ruining his children, he's ruining his wife, he's ruining the whole community 
I mean, yeah. what? You know, so are all the know, people we, doing a parallel community. Uh, that, that needs to be said, too, is that they don't realize that the generational thing they're doing, um, they're not helping anybody, paranormal investigators. There's not too many investigators that like me, Michael, um, because of my whistleblower, but they, it needs to be said that, too, is that they're not only hurting the client by misdiagnosing the um, uh, what's in the house, but they're also passing on to their children and grandchildren a curse um, a, a, a demonic attachments because of the fact that they're, uh, you know, um, committing necromancy or spiritism, uh, those activities is, is, is hurting their families in, in, in incalculable ways. And um, I'm going right. to have to break off tattoos. here shortly, buddy. I'm going to have to break off shortly. So maybe five minutes or so, if we could wrap up, that'd be please. Oh yeah. Unless you want to, you want to take a break and come back and I could just carry on or. What no, I, no, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I had mentioned that I kind of need to keep it kind of, kind of short tonight, but, uh, well, I know it's going on two hours anyway, uh, almost. So. Is it, is it uh, going on two hours? It can't be going yeah, on it's two 1040. hours. Yeah, it's 1040. Well, it's 1040. Oh. Starting at nine. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Well, this will be part one, and we'll have to continue on about the um, the, the the consequences of all doing all this stuff and what it what it really <laughs> means. Ramifications are so. Anyways, uh, Mark Hunneman and uh, his book. Once again, Mark, remind us, please. Oh, the book and such. Yes. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm sorry, and and um, yes, I. I want to get back to this uh, for sure. Um, uh, I just have a thing to say I tend to. It's uh, Mark Hunneman, and the book I wrote is Seeing Goes to God's Eyes, uh, um, and it's a worldview analysis of, of uh, the notion of ghosts. But um, I also have a um, probably about, I don't know, 150 blogs on, um, you know, everything from Bigfoot UFOs, but it's, it's mostly um, biblical analysis of, of this, that, and the other in the paranormal, and you can find that on my on my page, uh, Seeing Ghosts of God's Eyes, the, the link to A. Weber, which is where my blog is. And uh, if you need help, because I uh, have been involved in, as my, Michael said, uh, about 100 deliverance cases, you know, uh, cleansing people and, uh, or, and or the homes of uh, demonic uh, presence and oppression. So, uh, let me know if uh, you or someone you know is is struggling, and uh, we'll get you some help. May not be me, but uh, or we'll teach you how to do it yourself. Right, that was good stuff. I really enjoyed this, uh, Mark, and uh, too, I hope Michael. that uh, we'll keep this going. Uh, we still didn't even really talk much about the the the, the image that Mark sent me. Uh, we talked a little <laughs> bit. Uh, but I will post it as the cover page, and hopefully, Mark, you come join me soon for part two. Because obviously, this this issue is much deeper than uh, um, an hour and, and a half of a uh, show, and um, we just just really scratched the surface about what's really going on, folks. And uh, mm-hmm. I certainly enjoyed myself. Sir. I, I, I did. Sure. I mean, I just enjoyed myself as kicking back in my. Uh, my chair, I wasn't even paying attention to the computer, just like, I'm really enjoying this. I'm just, I just chill out. And just, you know. and I got a brother You're in great Christ host. who under, who knows what's going on. So I will get this posted up, and then um, you, uh, don't hang up on me yet. Okay, so Mark, oh, and then all the information will be on the information box, folks. This is Old Religion Dystopia, Knowing versus Believe.